Hi, Dr. Huntington here. In this video, we're going to look at gut health and why it's often the key to resolving health problems and also what you can do to ensure that your gut is healthy. First, let's look at the term gut. This term most accurately refers to the small intestine and the large intestine together. So when you, when you talk about gut health, we're talking about the health of those two organs. Now, why is this important? Well, it's because an unhealthy gut has consequences and they can be debilitating. A healthy gut plays an important role in your immune function, your digestive function, including the absorption of minerals. It also plays a big part in your energy level and even your weight. And much of this has to do with the quality, quantity, and composition of the bacteria in your gut. But what most people don't know is that your gut health has an enormous influence on your brain. Your gut health is key to how you respond to stress. It's also key to neurological diseases such as Parkinson's, as well as your overall mental health. So let's actually look at what makes up a healthy gut. One of the factors are the trillions of microorganisms that live there. That whole community is often referred to as the, the microbiome. And the individual little critters are often referred to as microbes. Your gut microbiome is composed mostly of bacteria, but you also find things like viruses and fungi in many people and sometimes even parasites. Now, my wife did not sleep for about three days after I showed her some super magnified pictures of these guys. So if you search for these pictures on the internet, it's at your own risk. Now, maintaining a healthy microbiome is extremely important because these critters help you to break down food. They also play a role in making vitamins and some hormones. And they also play a key role in your immune system function. Now, in general, what we want is good bacteria to be plentiful and greatly outnumber the bad bacteria. This allows the good bacteria to crowd out the bad bacteria so that the bad bacteria does not have a chance to multiply and as a larger group start to cause you health problems. So even though you will always have small amounts of bad bacteria, it's really the balance that's important. So lots of things can cause your microbiome to go out of balance. Well, let's focus on the top microbiome disruptors. Processed foods and chemical additives. Sugar genetically modified foods, and lack of sleep. Now, when you take antibiotics and other drugs that destroy all your bacteria and not just the bad guys, I mean, that's not what you want. That's a major microbiome disruptor because it's the good bacteria that is needed to crowd out the bad. This is why it's so destructive to a person's health if they take an antibiotic for, let's say, a viral infection. Because remember, antibiotics won't kill a virus or they take an antibiotic when their body could have dealt with the infection on its own without the drug. So here are some signs that your gut microbiome could be out of balance. You have digestive issues like gas, bloating, constipation, or diarrhea. Or you get sick frequently with things like the cold or the flu. Uh, maybe you have skin problems like acne, eczema, or psoriasis. And remember the connection to the brain. So symptoms like depression or memory loss and low energy all can be connected to the health of that microbiome. In fact, researchers are looking more and more into gut health and considering it to be the most important system to keep healthy. That's a major statement. And it makes sense as it's affecting everything from your metabolism to your mood. Now, the other important part of gut health is maintaining the integrity of the gut lining. That's the barrier between you know, where, the micro, my, where the microbiome is and the rest of your body. And it's easy to think of food that's sitting in your intestines as like inside your body, right? But it's not really. It's really outside your body. You see, un until the food is digested and moves through the gut lining and into your bloodstream, that's when it's inside your body. Now the health of your microbiome uh, plays a huge role in maintaining the integrity of the gut lining. And that's critical 
because you can't have things passing freely between your gut and your bloodstream. We'll take a look at the picture on the board here. Now it's broken into two halves. There's this half and then the half over there. We're gonna focus on this half here. And what I've got here is I've got a healthy bacteria drawn here, and I've got an unhealthy bacteria here on a teeter-totter. And what this is showing is, is the natural condition is for your healthy bacteria to greatly outnumber your harmful bacteria, right? We want this to be greater than this. Now, what that allows for is it contributes to a healthy condition, which we call tight junctions. And what that means is, is that the individual cells of the lining of your gut actually are close together and tightly connected. And what that creates is a barrier so that only the proper uh, items like digested food can make its way into the bloodstream um, on proper channels. But what happens if, you're, if your harmful bacteria greatly outweigh your healthy bacteria, that can create a situation where you're, you no longer have tight junctions. And what you end up with is uh, things like food and toxins and bacteria able to actually pass through these spaces, in this case between these cells, and actually make their way into the bloodstream where they don't belong. Now, when, when the lining of our gut becomes damaged, um, it becomes permeable, as I showed here. And as it allows the, the food, you know, food particles, undigested, the bacteria and the toxins to leak through into the bloodstream, it can cause all kinds of problems. And this is often a significant factor in people who are suffering from autoimmune conditions. It can often cause uh, systemic in inflammation and allergic reactions. Uh, this problem can also result in headaches and joint pain, um, brain fog, irritable bowel syndrome, and other skin conditions. It can also cause a whole list of other problems that we're not going to cover here, but I cover in some other videos. Okay. So how do you keep this community in your gut happy? Well, remember, you want good bacteria to flourish. So first, get plenty of prebiotics through your diet. Now, prebiotics are things like fiber and other non-digestible food items that actually feed the good bacteria. And I include plenty of these prebiotics in my product called Leaky Gut Support. And if you go to bodymanual.com, you can click on Leaky Gut Support, the product, and see where I actually list out which nutrients support the gut microbiome. And these are the nutrients that you'll, you'll want to consume plenty of on a regular basis. Now, you can also improve your gut health by cutting back on alcohol consumption. And if you do have an occasional drink, it should be organic red wine because it contains polyphenols, which may have a positive effect on your gut bacteria. You should also be very responsible with the use of antibiotics, and this means using them only when absolutely necessary. And lastly, take a good probiotic. In fact, when you go to bodymanual.com and look up leaky gut support, you'll see that I've included probiotics in the formulation. In fact, I've also included probiotics in the protein shake and several other products, all to support gut health. Okay, so that's quite a bit of material but it was really just an introduction to gut health. If you take anything away from this video, I want it to be that you must give some attention to the health of your gut. And that includes consuming the right foods and taking quality dietary supplements. All right, so check out some of the other videos uh, you know, for more information on improving your gut health, and I'll see you in the next one.